Now or Never is one of the most heartbreaking reviews I've had to do for such a long time, and it's for one very good reason. Ryan Lockett, designer, artist, creative genius, is pretty much my favorite designer currently. The worlds he creates, the passion he puts into his board games is just second to none. I played Sleeping Gods a while back, it's a campaign game, and this game absolutely flipped the switch on what I expect out of board games. This game created memories for me, and that is now the benchmark for all games going forward. Next up, Above and Below. This game is true elegance and it is fun from start to finish. I was smiling non-stop. Again, the worlds he created, the passion he put into that game, I absolutely adore. Fast forward and we now have the latest game from Ryan Lockett, Now or Never. Now why am I feeling just that little bit flat about this game? Put simply, expectations. Expectations because of the great games that came before it. Now can Now or Never live up to these lofty benchmarks? Well, we're going to look at the game a little bit more in detail and I'm going to give you my full thoughts on this game. Now or Never is a wonderful player competitive game that I think is more suited to the experienced gamer. In this game, you play either the story mode or the standard mode. Story mode, this is a choose your own adventure dressed up in a gorgeous looking board game. You're going to pick one of the four asymmetric characters and you're going to go more deeper into their backstory and understand why they're in this world. In the standard game, you won't get that background, you won't get that context, but you're still going to play as one of those four characters and you're going to be playing over six rounds in this fantasy filled world. So what is the premise of this game? Well, your beautiful home. It's been darkened by a crystal meteorite which came down and exploded out all these monstrosities, which then spread out like fungus engulfing your pristine land. Well, it's now 20 years later and the monsters are grown weaker. You are refugees, it's time to fight back and build up your ancestral village back to where it was before. In this game, you will go out and you will explore, you will fight monsters, you will interact with others and hire specialists, and most importantly, you're going to rebuild that village, rebuild that home of yours. Now, theme. And look, it's a Ryan Lockett game, so theme is always going to be at the forefront of any of his games. I love feeling engrossed in his worlds. I love understanding the characters, their backstories, and why they're actually in this world. Now, this game's going to be a little bit darker than previous games. The game board's a little bit darker, the story just that little bit darker, and those monsters just that little bit more menacing. But overall, Ryan has kept to the winning formula that he's had over his last previous games. Now, the story mode. This is where this game truly shines. These characters evolve and you really get to understand them. I think the character development in this game is better than any of his previous games and that for me is a massive highlight. So overall, theme in this is an absolute winner, but I expect nothing less from Ryan. Mechanics, and this is where my heartbreak lies. Let's rewind right back to that opening statement and I said that this is gonna be one of the hardest reviews I've had to do. Now the reason for this is Sleeping Gods. Look, I've always played board games, I've loved board games, but Sleeping Gods was the first time that I introduced my partner to a heavier game and she loved it. She grew that passion and in turn, we grew our passion playing board games together. This was that turning point where she just wanted to play more board games and in turn, I just loved playing with her. So Sleeping Gods is so close to our heart. And then on top of that, Above and Below, again, one of her favorite games. So anything Ryan Lockett hits up, we were so excited to play. But this game crushed her soul. The mechanics in this game are so tight. Resources are tight. Money is tight. Collecting specials, collecting uh, quest cards, just so many things. And it was too much. Tightness in board gaming is something that is such a fine balancing act. And for her, it tipped her over to the edge where she did not enjoy it. It felt like a chore and she said to me she did not want to play this game ever again. Now that is what is heartbreaking to me. Now the problem with this is my review now is not going to be through my rose coloured Ryan Locker glasses. It's going to be through our glasses. So while I enjoyed the game, while I enjoy tight economic games, tight Euros, for her, this was too much, and that is something we need to think about is that not all gamers are going to be the same. 
Now we know the mechanics are tight, but what actually are the core mechanics of this game? Well, on your turn, you can do one of two things, hero action or a specialist action. On the hero action, move a certain number of spaces around the game board. From there, you can land either on a worker placement spot and you can take a worker placement action. Or you might land on a search token, you might want to search and explore the lands. Or lastly, you might land on a monster and you might want to fight a monster. Next up, the specialist actions. On your play board, you can have certain specialists that you can use throughout the course of the game. These will give you things like building back up your health, buying some gear cards to make you stronger, and most importantly, we're going to be building up our village. And remember, this is the core concept of this game. From mechanics, art and components, and look, the art truly draws me into this world. The centerpiece is going to be the three panel game board that's going to sit in the center of the table. This is where you're going to go around and start exploring these lands. Off to the side of that, you're going to have the seasons board. This is where you're going to be rescuing villages and buying new gears to make you stronger. Now, each player is also going to have two of their own boards. You're going to have your player board, you're going to have your village board. This is going to be a table hog. Straight up, there is a lot of cardboard on a table and you are going to need a very big table to play this at anything more than two players. Now, from there, the rest of it is a lot of cardboard. There is so many pieces in this game and this game is a true beast of a setup. So be prepared for your very first setup. Look, it is going to take you quite a while and unfortunately that is something that is slightly off-putting for me. Replayability, and this is another plus for this game. Now, the selling point is going to be in this story mode. It's going to do away with the search tokens, and instead, we're going to be mapping out a story instead. Each character is going to have their own story over six different chapters. Now, we're going to have a little bit of story overlap for each character, but eventually, they're going to branch off into different narratives, and this is where the true value in this game lies. The other part of replayability is the game board. Flip it over, and we have a different game board. We have the Underworld variant, and also flip over your town boards as well, they've also got an Underworld variant, so again, you have a lot of replayability built into this game. So there we go, we've touched on theme, mechanics, art and components, and replayability. So now let's refresh what are the things I did not like about this game. I shall start off with my partner again, and again, it was that tightness in this game mechanics. That elongated game board. Now, the things you're going to need at the start, you're going to need money, you're going to need resources, you're going to need quest cards. Unfortunately, these worker placement spots are so spread out around the board and it's actually hard work getting across the board to all these different places. And even when you do get there, you're only getting one or two of these items. And it's such a slow drag at the start of this game to get anything rolling. Now for me, probably my biggest bugbear was setting up this game. There is so many components, so many fiddly components, you've got to spread out all around the board and it just took ages. But probably one that was just a little bit sort of off kilter here was the re-roll variant. On the very last page of the rule book, and I didn't see it for my first couple of games, but I found this re-roll variant, which is gonna add into your luck mitigation. So basically what you're gonna do is when you're gonna roll that dice and you keep getting those bad rolls after bad rolls, and it happened to me, it was so frustrating. Now all of a sudden there is a re-roll variant that you can choose to play with. But the problem was it was stuck in right at the end. I didn't see it. I wish actually that was a core part of the game. Let's end off with, who is this game for? I think this game is more for the sleeping gods person as opposed to the above and below person. And what I mean by that is the above and below person is the person who just loves Euro games, loves fun, just you know loves that pretty artwork but really wants more fun in their games. I think there's actually better games out there. But that sleeping gods person, the person who wants to be immersed in the world more, the person who wants that story mode, the person who wants to build up their character, the person who wants to know why they're doing the things they're doing they're gonna really truly appreciate this game. Now, just remember, I really think this game is more for the experienced gamer. It is a tight game. It is something that, you know, for the newer gamers, it could be quite off-putting. Now, how would I rank these games? Unfortunately, Now or Never would come in third in my rankings. I would go Sleeping Gods, Above and Below, and then Now or Never. But in saying that, I still enjoyed it. Now, I have not played near and far, so who knows where that would fit into that ranking system. But that is my thoughts on Now or Never. Now, I would really appreciate your consideration in subscribing to my channel. If you enjoyed this review and enjoyed the work I put into this review, I really appreciate, you know, at the end of the day, I wanna earn your subscription. So hopefully I earned it from this video. Anyway, leave a comment below. What is your favorite Ryan Lockett game? 
Look, again, for me, it's sleeping gods, but I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, that's it from me. I'm Hoax. This is Board Game Bangers. Till next time. Laters.